welcome to my webinar using SOLIDWORKS weldments in non-conventional ways. As Chris mentioned earlier, I am Taryn Lorente. I am an application engineer with Computer Aided Technology, and I am coming to you guys live from our Bellevue, Washington office. In this webinar, I wanted to tell you about this bridge assembly that I created last summer. My dad told me he wanted to build a bridge to go over the creek and in his backyard, and that got me excited to design a bridge using SOLIDWORKS weldment features. I had seen custom wooden structures being made with weldments in the past and wanted to try my own version of it. I ended up with this creation and found out it is much too large to put in their yard, but it was an extremely fun side project. So with that being said, let me talk about the agenda for this webinar. I'm going to go over the basics of SOLIDWORKS weldments, talk about 2D and 3D sketching because creating the base of any weldment structure begins with your sketches. We'll go over custom profiles, how to create them, and some important tips. Then I'll go over file locations and how to get your custom profiles to show up in SOLIDWORKS, drawing and cut lists, how to make them, what to keep in mind multi-body interference detection, how that can be helpful in your models and how to use it. And the last bit is just how to make your model yours. So well-meant structures are generally straight metal lines, but they don't have to be. Sometimes you can use the product just to easily create a multi-body part, whether that be for shelves, tables, decks, houses, bridges, you name it. Um, what's awesome about the weldment feature as well is that you can easily add gussets and end caps to your model, um, which is probably more useful for metal structures, but is something to mention. And here are some non-conventional examples of weldment structures. So on the left, we have like a deck or more of a balcony kind of model that I created. Um, in the middle is that bridge assembly that I made last summer. And then on the right side is actually a gazebo that was designed by my coworker Alex Borsfeld last year. Um, he did give me permission to add it to this webcast. And yeah, that was just a special project that he worked on using SOLIDWORKS weldments. If you think about how much time it would take to, you know, design each different structural member separately and then have to make them all together in a SOLIDWORKS assembly, you're definitely saving time by using SOLIDWORKS weldments for creating these types of structures. Um, 2D and 3D sketching. As I stated earlier, in order to create your weldment features, you first need to create good sketches. What's great about using weldments to build a bridge is that I can create parts using curved shapes. So if I go into SOLIDWORKS here, you can see this kind of sketch that I have started. Um, you could definitely add structural members to these arches here. And notice in the feature manager design tree that there are three separate sketches. So I first created a sketch of just this um, three point arc. Then I created an offset plane and copied the sketch onto that plane. And then at the end, I'm finally 3D sketching. So you can use both 2D and 3D sketches. Doesn't all have to be contained in one sketch. Um, another thing to note is that if we go within this 3D sketch, you want to make sure that you're using relations instead of dimensions as much as possible. I do have one dimension in here, but other than that, it's all relations such as, you know, making the endpoints coincident with the other sketches and using an along Z relation. Something else to note is that when you are sketching in 3D, the tab key switches between sketch planes um, that you will be adding components to. Custom profiles. When you're creating wooden structures, you'll first need to create custom profiles. Um, that's because there's an amazing library of weldment profiles for metal parts and structures, such as C channels and I beams and whatnot. Um, but unfortunately, SOLIDWORKS does not come with a library of wooden profiles, so you will have to create your own, which we will go over. I created mine based on timber dimension, so let's kind of go in and create a custom profile for a 2x4 board. 
You can do this by starting a new part. And then I'm going to start a sketch on the front plane. The plane that you choose isn't important, um, but we're just choosing the front. I'm going to go to a center rectangle and start at the origin and just create a nice rectangle here. And in the dimensions of a two by four, which is actually three and a half inches by one and a half inches. And two by four boards usually have rounded corners. So I'm actually going to add some sketch fillets here at the sketch level for just an eighth of an inch on all four corners. At this point, you could be done sketching. However, I do want to mention pierce points to you. So you can think of pierce points as kind of threading the eye of a needle. It's where the sketch intersects the weldment profile plane. And you choose your pierce point within the structural member feature by hitting that locate profile button, um, which I'll show you in a bit. But right now, um, there are five pierce points that we could choose if we were to create a structural member from this profile. Um, the default pierce point is always going to be the origin, and the other pierce points available right now are the four corners. If you want to be able to add more pierce points, it's really easy. All you do is turn on the point tool and just start adding points where you want pierce points. So I'm gonna add four more in the midpoints of each line, making sure I add that relation so that the sketch is still fully defined. And we can hit okay and exit out of the sketch. Um, something that you will want to do at this level of the life of creating the custom profile is adding in any custom properties that you want to be included in your weldment cut list. So um, keep in mind that you will save this part essentially under a name, but that name will not show up in your weldment cut list. Instead, it's included in the description. Um, so we're going to go ahead and add a description here because there is nothing set up yet. We did start from a brand new part. So I'm going to go up to the file properties icon and we're going to select description here and I'm going to type in lumber two inches by four inches and just hit OK. One other thing that we could do at this level is add a material to your custom profile. By doing that, anytime you bring in that custom profile and use it to create a structural member, it will import that material information to your part. By leaving the material blank though, you can decide once you have your part created what type of material is being used. So I'm going to go ahead and leave that blank. If you did want to add a material, you would do that how you would normally add one to a part by right clicking and going to edit material. And now that we have created this custom profile, we want to save it and you have to do this in a specific way. You're not going to save a part. You're going to be saving the sketch as a library feature part file. How you would go about doing that is clicking on the sketch in the feature manager design tree. Then you want to hit save as. And then you want to choose a folder that is easily accessible. And it does have to be split up into separate folders and I'll go over that in a bit. So I'm going to save it into the standard sizes folder and we're going to name it two by four. And I'm not going to hit save yet because remember, we're not saving this as a SOLIDWORKS part. We're saving the file type as a library feature part. If you don't see this file type in the save as type menu, it's probably because you forgot to select sketch one before hitting save as. So it is a very important step. Um, and it is going to reroute where I was saving that. So we're going to go back in. I have it in the correct folder. I named it correctly. It is saved as a library feature part, which I need, and I'll hit save. 
So now if you notice in the future manager design tree, the icon for that sketch added an L right there. That just means that it's now a library feature part. You can also see at the top that the part file is saved as solid library feature part instead of solid part. All right, file locations. So once you create the custom weldment profiles, we have to point them in the right file location so that they show up correctly when you're creating structural members. Um, and this is where I promise I'm going to talk about those different folder types, but within SolidWorks, how you would change your file location is going to system options up here. Going to file locations and dropping on this menu and going to weldment profiles. I'm going to go ahead and click add. And we're going to select this top level folder that I created. I'm not going to go into the lumber folder yet. I'm not going to go into the standard sizes folder. I'm going to select this top level folder and hit OK. And SolidWorks will ask and make sure that you can change your search path and hit yes. So now we are good to go. Um, the reason for separating your uh, file locations into separate folders is because when you're in SOLIDWORKS creating a structural member, it's going to set these up under standard type and then size when you're creating your structural member and selecting that custom profile. So um, personally, I have all of my profiles saved in my weldments folder. So when I went to my uh, file locations, for weldment profiles, I selected that top level weldments folder to point to. From there, when I start bringing in those custom profiles and creating members, I have lumber pine to choose from, which is the standard. The type is standard sizes here. And then all of my sizes are listed as the uh, library feature part files within that standard size folder. So that's how it kind of gets brought into SOLIDWORKS and why it needs to be split up the way it is. And we can actually go ahead and start adding a structural member to this sketch that I showed you earlier um, by going to the Weldments tab, clicking on Structural Member. And now we're going to choose that 2 by 4 size that I just created. So I'm going to drop this down to my Lumber Standard type will be standard sizes and the size will be that two by four right there. Um, then you're going to select the sketch entity which you want to add it to. So I'm going to select this straight line right here. I can select these arch lines. Remember, it doesn't have to be a straight sketch. Um, and we're just going to add it in. It's not quite sitting tangent to the arc like I wanted to. I want it to sit nice on top of it. So I am going to scroll down in the property manager and click on locate profile. But before then, I'm just going to change the view here. Click on locate profile and I'm going to select this bottom right corner as the pierce point. Um, but I can select any of the other points that I added in. Um, and obviously the default was the origin. So I'm going to select this one right here. And because it is a bridge and it is arched, it's, you know, not sitting the way that I want it to. So I'm going to go down and change this angle manually, actually, to have it sit nice and tangent to this curve. So now I'm happy with that. I'll hit OK to exit out of this feature. Go back to my main view. And now we have already started our bridge. Um, you can add more members at this point if you wanted to. An easy way to make this board go all the way down the bridge, however, is to use a curve driven pattern. So how you would do that is by going to features dropping down the linear pattern menu, 
and going to curve driven pattern and I'll select this arch as my direct direction. Um, I'll keep it at 50 and change this to be four inches apart. And instead of choosing a feature to pattern, I'm going to choose a body and we're going to select this body right here. So now it goes all the way down the bridge and I'll hit OK. Um, again, notice there is no specified material yet. That's because I didn't specify material at the profile level. Um, and we already have a really good basis for a bridge. A funny story that I want to mention is when I created my bridge, I did not use a curve driven pattern. Instead, I created those sketch entity lines all the way down the bridge and located every single member and changed every single angle manually. That is because I didn't think the curve driven pattern worked the way I wanted it to. Um, if I show you, it's doing the same thing now. Uh, you can see that as it goes down this curve, they start to like protrude into that sketch and it's getting cut in the middle when I want it to sit nice and tangent on top of it. There is, however, an easy way to fix that. I wasn't aware of this at the time. Um, if you edit that curve driven pattern and change the curve method from transform curve to offset curve, um, now you can see it's sitting nicely on top of it and we're happy. So, you know, learn from my mistakes. If you think you're doing a lot of unnecessary work, you definitely could be, um, but yeah, that is totally okay. Learn from my mistakes, guys. All right, drawings and cut lists. So cut lists are nice organized tables that easily shows the recipient how to cut the members so that they can be assembled. You can add as much or as little information as you want. This can include material, cut length, quantities, or any other custom properties that you choose to include. So we're gonna go ahead and create this drawing um, from a drawing that I already started. So this is just kind of like the base of my bridge. Um, it's one part. And I did use weldments to create it. So we're going to add a weldment cut list by going to the annotation tab, dropping down the tables menu, and going to weldment cut list. Um, I'll select this view right here. And I'm going to leave all of these settings to be their default settings and hit OK. And now I can place this wherever I need it to. And I'll just kind of resize it a bit so it sits nicely. Um, at the moment, these item numbers are not pointing to anything. That's because we need to add in some balloons. You can easily do this by auto ballooning, um, going to annotations, auto balloon. And I'm going to select this view and you can change the pattern type. I'm going to leave it at this square pattern because I like how it's set up and we'll hit OK. Uh, another thing I do want to mention to you guys is that for item number five, notice that there's no description here. So item number five are four inch by six inch boards, but we aren't aware of that because I forgot to add in that custom property of the description when I created that custom profile. So um, if you remember when we created the custom profile, I went ahead and did that. This can easily be fixed though by going into the part itself. And on the feature manager design tree, there's this cut list folder, drop that down and the member that does not have a description, if you right click on it and go to properties, then you can easily add that in. So I'm gonna set this to be lumber, pine, four inches by six inches, so that the recipient of this drawing knows what type of board to cut. I'll hit okay. And because SolidWorks updates everything, it's going to update the drawing manually for us, not manually, automatically for us, and it looks really good. Um, the last thing I do want to mention to you guys is that item number one does not have the same setup in the cut list as the rest of them. That's because I actually didn't use weldments to create those like support beams on the bottom. I instead extruded 
um, a couple of sketches. And so those are just extruded bodies there. Um, that is okay. I definitely could have used SolidWorks Weldman's if I wanted to. Um, designer's choice at that point, no big deal. All right, multi-body interference detection. So this is a great tool that will find bodies that interfere with each other. It's very helpful when you have large assemblies or when you have parts with a lot of bodies. Um, I'm going to show you how to use it with this deck or balcony model that I created. Um, it is a fairly large part. And there are a lot of bodies in there, and I think that some of them might be interfering with each other, but I'm not quite sure. So we're going to check using the interference detection tool by going to the evaluate tab and turning on interference detection. Um, from here, you can do this in either a part or an assembly. It'll be located in the same place. And you can either calculate if there's any interference for the entire part, if you're in an assembly for the entire assembly, um, or you can do specific bodies and components. I'm just going to calculate it for the entire part right now. And we're going to hit calculate and see if there are any, any interfering bodies. Um, so, as you can see in the bottom left corner, there is an interference going on there. If we drop down this arrow, um, we can see specifically which bodies are interfering. And there is more that you can do with this tool, but I'm going to go ahead and hit OK to exit out of it. And now we're going to fix that part. Um, so I'm going to do this by going to Weldments. There's this feature called Trim and Extend. And we're going to go ahead and turn that on. I need to select which body will be trimmed. This body will be split into separate bodies. And I do want this body to continue to be one and go all the way down. So I'm going to choose this beam right here to trim. Um, I'm going to turn off allow extension because I don't want to extend anything. And for the trimming boundary, I'm going to select this face right here. Now you can see in the preview and these little flags, it has separated that beam that I said to be trimmed into two separate bodies. So there's body one and body two over here. Um, right now it's keeping both of them, but I don't want to keep this body on the left because it is in the way. So if I hover over that flag that says keep and just click on it, it's going to discard that body instead. And it did update the preview. So now that beam ends right here and that's the end of it. Um, another thing in this tool, you can add a weld gap to it. Obviously, I'm not welding any parts in this model, um, but it is nice that it can add a little bit of room for clearance. So I just left that to be a 16th of an inch and we'll hit OK. And I think everything looks good now, but just to make sure, I'm going to go ahead and run interference detection one more time. Again, by going to the evaluate tab, turning on interference detection, I'll leave it at calculating for the entire part and hit calculate here and it says no interferences so we are good to go and i'll hit okay to exit out of that so the last thing that i want to mention to you guys is making it yours you have the entire SOLIDWORKS interface to work with. Just because you're using weldments and creating weldment structures does not mean that you are limited to just using weldment features. You can use curve-driven pattern if you wish. Um, you can do what I did and create an assembly from your weldment structure and start adding things to, you know, customize it a bit. What I did personally is I um, brought it into an assembly and started mating in these siding pieces. And we can take a look at how I created those. So here's what the piece looks like on its own. Um, essentially what I did to make it is I 
started a sketch and made this frame, if you will, out of uh, well bent. And then uh, after that, I started a new sketch. And from that new sketch, while I was editing it, I brought in this picture of a tree. Um, I got the picture off of Google, so nothing crazy, just liked it. And how I brought it in was you go to tools, sketch tools, and at the bottom here, sketch picture. And you can select whatever picture you need to bring in at that point. Um, after I inserted that picture and kind of resized it to my liking, I went ahead and um, exited out of the sketch, renamed it sketch picture, so this way it can be hidden later. Um, I'm just gonna change the view really fast. And I'm actually gonna hide this body by hovering over it and hitting the tab key. Um, that's just kind of a little trick. And then how I created that extrude was I started a new sketch and I just use splines to kind of outline the tree branches and make it how I like. Um, make sure that it can be extruded so it does have to be a closed sketch. Um, and then, you know, once that was created, I just extruded that sketch to be the same thickness as the frame. And this was what I ended up with. Um, again, from there, I brought it into the assembly that I created. I used the with mate to mate them in where I wanted them to. And um, essentially these end pieces over here, I did the exact same thing, um, brought it into a, or brought that same sketch into a new part. And I just zoomed in a lot more on the heart aspect of it. Um, but yeah. Do what you will with SOLIDWORKS and Weldments. You have the creative freedom to do amazing things with it. And, you know, don't be afraid to use SOLIDWORKS Weldments to make wooden structures because they're not just for metal. <laughs> and with that being said, thank you guys so much for coming to my webinar and I hope you all have an amazing day.